people like, like you know, because I, I think sometimes I may be talking about this as opposed to, so I have to be reminded to do that and the kind of feedback. So I'll try to, this should theoretically be better than before, but before was pretty clear most of the time, but you know, hopefully this is better. Okay, so again, we're trying to, today we're gonna basically demonstrate uh, two things. We're gonna first of all talk again, repeat the basic theory as to what we're doing in chapter 11, the analysis of variance, and then to demonstrate it with a concrete example, apply to a, a situation which is the, uh, the smallest, I shouldn't say the smallest, you can also have chapter 11 for two groups, except when you have two groups, you might as well do chapter 10, which is a little bit easier, but it works for two groups as well. But we're comparing three groups, and we're claiming the drop in blood pressure taking Drug one might be a standard drug, drug, drug number two might be a placebo, and drug number three might be an experimental drug. And we want to know, are they all the same? And we collect data, and of course this picture would not be the right picture for that, because here, if we make the data a little more realistic, will be the drop in blood pressure would be like a, a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Of course you have to have, it should be negative in some kind, of course the bigger the number, Okay, so we have the first three, four, two, three, four, two, and the average is somewhere around here. Then we have one, four, two, and the average is somewhere here. And this other group is at seven, eight, seven, seven, eight, seven, and the average is somewhere here, and I should have made this one, two, and three, of course. Group one, two, one, three, and um, but the, 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 re, the using your basic intuition about statistics, the fact that this group is much higher or bigger drop than these other groups, and what's more, the standard deviation is pretty small. All three numbers are pretty similar. If the one was up here, and one was down here, and one was here, and the average was still over here, then we have a different conclusion. But the fact is, the standard deviation was pretty small. All three numbers were pretty close to each other: the seven, the eight, and the seven. So th that's another p indication that group number three really is different than the other groups, which means that the, the H0 is not true. The H1 is probably true in this case. So the way we just briefly, to repeat what I said last time, what, I was what some of you other guys are trying to answer, so what, what is the basic philosophy of chapter 11? Well, we analyze the variance, and in particular, we look, we look at the variation in, among the columns, it's called the, uh, the variation among the groups. And we said last time that can be explained by the fact that people are different because we're all taking the exact same drug under the exact same conditions. And the fact that they're different is, well, people are different, called experimental error. And likewise, why are these different? Because of experimental error. Why are these different? Because of experimental error. So now we look at the, uh, the variation in this direction. And we're literally going to calculate variation in two different points of view. The variation among the groups, not with, I'm sorry, this would be, Big mistake. This shouldn't be among, this should be within. We're looking at within a column. The variation within is gonna be due to experimental error. And the variation among the groups, well this already can be explained by two factors. Well these three people are different because they're taking three different drugs. And in fact, if the A0 is false, the drug should be acting differently. So one thing is maybe we call that the experimental Treatment effect, I'm sorry, the treatment effect. The variation due to treatment. But on the other hand, if the A0 is still true, that these three drugs are basically the same as just, you know, it doesn't make a difference if it's this way or that way, these three people are still three different people, and even if they're taking the exact same drug, if the A0 is true, they're all basically taking the same drug, then you're gonna get, you're gonna get differences that can be explained by the fact that people are different in any direction, and that's called experimental error. And if you take the variation among and divide it by the variation within, that ratio called the, re the F ratio in honor of the guy who invented this, Sir Ronald Fisher, about 100 years ago, um, that ratio should have the following structure. The top part of it we just said is equal to these two things here, experiment treatment, I'll abbreviate it by TX for treatment, plus variation two to error. Again, I'll abbreviation the word experimental error to the word error. And the bottom part of it, the within, is just simply the error. There's no other reason to, there's no other way to explain why people taking the exact same drug should be different. And by a simple knowledge of, of fractions, 
Hey, thanks so much. You just spray it on. You spray it on the wood, and then just use wipe. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Making progress slowly but surely. Okay. But by the, before I go any further, I mean I repeated this last time. Any questions so far before I go any further? Because now, count, yes. Now we're, we're going to talk about how to get the actual numbers. Right now we're talking about like sort of conceptually. Then we'll talk about the numbers in a few minutes from now. How you get the actual variance will be by use, by the formula for the variance. You know, x minus x bar squared over n minus one. But we have shortcuts in this chapter for that. Yes, Alex. Yes, I'm sorry. This should be a sigma squared. And if you have your name out, still no name? Oh, you have your name out. Look at that. Okay, thank you for noticing. I want to put it back. Alex. Okay, that should be sigma squared. Now, if it turns out, if this turns out to be a number, this turns out to be a one, or close to one, because the statistics things aren't exactly, you don't have to be exactly, but they're close to one. What does that imply? The only way that something, a fraction could be one, if the top and bottom are the same. How can the top and bottom be the same if this number here that I'm covering up should be what number? Zero. It has to be zero. What does that mean if, it, if it's zero? It means the A zero is true. There's no difference due to, sorry, try it again. I made the same mistake last time and uh, it's getting too complicated. Let me pass it back to Roger, please. Okay, let's try again. If this fraction turns out to be one, the only way that can happen is if this treatment is equal to zero because the top and bottom equals the same thing. So if this is equal to zero, that, proves that, that implies that the A zero is true. That there's no difference due to treatment. On the other hand, if this turns out to be bigger than one, if the F, you know, if the F is bigger than one, that implies that the top is bigger than the bottom. But how can the top be bigger than the bottom? This is, all these are positive numbers because they're squares. How can the top be bigger than the bottom if the, this thing here is what? Bigger than zero. Because then something, then, then the top can be bigger than the bottom. And if the top is bigger, if so, if this is bigger than zero, what does that imply? That there is something due to the, there is a treatment effect going on. Here. There's, there's something, there's some variation that could be explained by the fact that we're taking three different drugs, and therefore that implies. So this implies the H zero is true, and this implies that the H one is true. And again, folks, my appeal to you, my hope is that. You know, I, can, I can just type this up and give it to you and memorize. Anybody can memorize, especially if you're allowed to bring this into the test. So, but I'm trying to get you to understand this so that if you put away your notes and somebody, let's say, was absent today, and you had to explain it to them, you'd be able to explain this to them as I try to explain it to you before the break. But so basically, all that the, chat, the rest of today's lecture is going to be to how do you calculate these two variations and it turns out it's just a, just a formula, like everything else. There's a formula for calculating, but when we, at the very last step, we're going to divide one number by another number, and if that comes out very close to one, that proves the A0 is right. And if that ratio of this calculation divided by that calculation is much bigger than one, then we say the H1 is right. Yes, uh, Alex? No, no. This, I'm telling you, what we're going to do is we're going to, the, the, the basic approach to this whole chapter is we're going to calculate variation in this direction. That's called the within. Then we're going to calculate the variance in this direction. That's called the among. And then we're going to take those two numbers and divide them. The reason why we divide them is because we said before that the, the among can be decomposed into these two pieces and the within can be decomposed into this thing only. And since the logic is if they're the same, that proves it's got to be zero. So that's the way I'm just trying to explain to you why we're doing what was, the fact that we're calculating the two variances, then we're going to divide them, and then we're going to interpret them. The only the other step that you should be aware of since it's coming down the road and it really relates to all the other statistics, what if it comes out to 1.001? Let's say this calculation comes to 1.001. Does that prove the A0 is right, or is, is it 1.001 technically is bigger than 1, so that should prove the H1 is right? Which one is it going to be? Yes, sir. What? Because in statistics, just because something, I mean, this is theoretical, like, like, like remember we do the hypothesis testing, A0, mu equal 4.5. If the average comes out to 4.6, we still say it's 4.5. We don't expect it to be perfectly exactly 4.5. The same thing here. We don't expect it to be exactly 1.0000. Now, how much bigger than one are we allowed to, how much leeway are we going to give it? Well, that depends upon the alpha, the degrees of freedom, and all the other stuff that gives you, that sort of predicts how much variation you're naturally going to exist among these types of numbers. 
But that's for, and that's that's two 